Hello everyone, it's Rebecca. I have a very special video for you today. I wanna to introduce you to the Peerless watercolor if you've not seen it before. It's one of my favorite and I wanna show you how to make a palette out of these. You can see these papers here actually have the watercolor embedded straight onto them. It's kind of a fabric paper. And here you can see the palette that I'm going to show you how to make so that you can use these out and about very easily. I've got a lot to cover with you in a short amount of time, so let's get started. You can see here that I'm just making some swatches of my colors because once I get these into the palette, I won't actually be able to see the name of the color which is on the back. So here I'm just showing myself what the colors are and I'll use this throughout my process to organize my colors. So first I just cut them up into bits and then started organizing them based on the page that I would like to put them into my little bound book palette that I'm making. You'll see it all come together. So just stick with me. This is super fun. You'll really enjoy this, I think. So then I've picked everything up with the top left in the top of the pack. And so I know exactly what order I want each of my pages in. And then I've grabbed some watercolor paper and organized what I think will fit on two pages then taking them out and just cut them to size so that I can fold them into a little book. And you'll see what I mean here in a moment. So I've got my extra pages and just getting them cut up. And when I fold them, if you don't have a bone folder, the best thing to use is just the edge of some scissors to get a really nice crisp edge. So just run over it and you'll get a really nice edge there. And then you'll find that the inside pages are a little bit bigger then, so you can just trim that away. Next, I'm binding my little palette booklet. So I've put some craft fun foam underneath so that I don't punch into my desk. And then I'm using a needle to punch five holes across the edge. And I've got one in the middle, and then I'm keeping about an inch away from the outside edges, and then just adding those extra two holes at an even amount of space between each other. And I've just used that tape dispenser to push the needle in so I didn't hurt my fingers. Once I've done that, I've pushed the needle in and kind of worked it around in a circle to make the hole a bit bigger because I've got some really cute string that I wanna use and it's a bit wider. So I need my holes to be a tiny bit enlarged to make that possible. Now, don't freak out. I didn't actually have a straight needle. I would encourage you to use a big needle that your string will fit into, but use a straight needle because this one is a little bit dangerous and I had to be particularly careful with it. So you'll see I'm pulling it straight through the middle first, leaving some extra string, and then I'm coming out to a hole next to it. Pull it really taut so it's nice and straight as you go. At this point, we're simply weaving in and out. So you go through the middle, up the next one and out the outer side edge there. Now follow me and just simply pause if you need to repeat this part of it, but go back in that second hole again. Just avoid the other string that is in that same hole and pull it nice and tight. Now here you want to skip the middle and go to that second half of the holes that you've got and then start to weave in and out of that section. So go to the very bottom hole through there and then back in through just like you did at the top. Now, lastly, you just simply finish it off by going through that middle hole. It does feel complicated, but if you watch this a couple of times, it will make perfect sense. I finished off this palette book binding with a couple of good tight knots and a little bow, which I cut the ends off of when finished. And I think it ends up being very secure and cute as well. There's something particularly satisfying about creating your own little booklet that makes you want to use this again and again. To ensure that my Peerless watercolor doesn't contaminate colors on adjacent pages, I'm inserting plastic in between my pages. And right here you see that I'm just arranging my pieces to ensure that the little gap that I have where the plastic doesn't fit on the bottom won't be affected because my paper was just a bit longer than my plastic. So the edges that are too large, I'm cutting off. And there you can see I'm using some washi tape to adhere in my plastic one on one side and then flip it over and give it a nice good push on the other side as well. Plastic could be a bit tricky to bind with a string and needle and this I think works perfectly fine. The washi tape does hold it in place and adds a nice pretty feel to the pages anyway. Peerless Watercolor is a artist grade of watercolor 
and the pigment on these little peerless watercolors are very highly pigmented, which means that you can pick up a lot of color from them. So it's very hard to actually see the true color of them. So I wanted to create a little sampling on my front page showing all of the different colors in action as a quick little cheat sheet for myself. So you can see here that I've just gotten myself a pencil marking for the different places and then drew a line between them with my ruler and have used a thicker pen to mark out my edge. So you can see me put the markings in for the different squares using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens. And then I went around the edges with that larger, the medium sized pen to add in a nice finishing touch to my edges. You'll see in a bit that I went on and added the names inside of those squares to match up with where the different colors would show up in my palette booklet. So here I'm taking my little art swatches and using them as a guide to organize my colors and then stacking them the same way I stacked the other ones to ensure that I get these colors correctly. And then using some double-sided tape, I'm adhering it to the back of each of my squares and then just taking them off and placing them onto my palette. I made sure and used them with a little bit of space near the binding as well because I wanted to write the name of the color right next to it as well because I wanted to be able to refer to the name while I was referring to the front page as well. So you see the gaps there that I've created and used rows of four and three to be able to add that in and then used my cheat sheet as obviously I couldn't then see the name anymore, which is why the swatches were so important and wrote in the name of each of the colors where it belonged. Next I used a little bit of the color towards the left underneath each one and then use some water to dilute the color down a bit further to the right so that I could get a good gradiated perspective of what that color would act like at its darkest and lightest versions which I think will be helpful moving forward. So apologies for skipping this step here but you can see that I went ahead and added into the squares the different colors and all I did was I added some of the color on the left, just the pure color. And then on the right hand side of the square, I actually added a bit of gesso, which you can see here onto the right hand side in a little square, which I added the color to so that I could see how it would act because in art journals, oftentimes I will put gesso down and I can then see how those colors would act in each occasion. Next, I wanted to actually put the word peerless on the top of my sample page. And so I printed it out in a nice cursive font that I liked. And now I'm going on to the back that I can kind of see through because I've printed it out in black. And I'm going over it with a pencil marking, just making all of the outside edges nice and pencil marked. With a medium amount of pressure, I'm using another pencil to draw over the top part of the paper and it is impressing all of the pencil markings that I made on the back of the page onto my watercolor paper. I don't want to leave an impression, but I have managed to transfer the lead onto that other paper with as much ease as possible. There are many ways to transfer an image onto a surface and this is simply one of them, which you can do with virtually no tools available to you. Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens are permanent ink, which means that when I use watercolor on them, they won't spread around or smear, which is ideal for this situation where I don't want them to move at all. You can see I'm just outlining my edges again so that I can then in a moment, watercolor inside of the space that's left behind for me. You can see before I've done that, I've taken an eraser, which is suitable for watercolor paper, and just done a very light going over so that I don't have any pencil marks left behind, simply because I just wanted a very clean feel to what I was finishing with. So next, I've gone in with the watercolor. This is a perfect example for you to see all of this watercolor in action. And I'm starting with blue and I'm working my way through the rainbow of colors, putting it onto the surface. And I'm just using a 
small little liner brush to do this because I have a very small space there and just choosing colors as I work my way up. And just in this instance, straight away, I can find that my sample page here is really helping me to be able to make decisions about the colors that I wanna use in any situation when I'm using these Peerless watercolors. They are so highly pigmented, you hardly need to pick up any color at all in order to have a huge amount of color on your surface. So really, these are ideal if you feel that you've used watercolor and it feels very washed out and not very vibrant. Watercolors from Peerless are anything but washed out. They are so vibrant, you have to kind of water them down. It's brilliant. I absolutely love the vibrancy and color that you can get from them. So I've just continued on with my different colors and tried to work my way through to show a sampling of the different color options that I have within my various palette colors that I have here. In the future, I may add the very few colors that are left that Peerless Watercolor have actually available outside of this set of 60 and I might do that by adding additional pages in with washi tape or something like that but I may just make an entirely different booklet because this is a set on its own and I quite enjoy it. This set of 60 is such a wide range of colors that the likelihood of me buying any of the other colors anytime soon is probably quite minimal so this is brilliant for me. Watercolor in general has often been considered an art form which takes very little space to store the art supplies and I would have to say that Peerless Watercolor has managed to take this to an entirely different level because everything is embedded on these little tiny sheets of paper and you can simply embed them onto your peerless palette like I have done here and you end up with a little booklet which you can store right in your art journal which is perfect for those who like to create on the go or simply have very small amount of storage space. So this is the peerless palette that I have created. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at it all and seeing what I've created. I hope that you might go on and create your own peerless palette and show me what you've done. I'd love to see it. This is so much fun. I will be using this for years to come. You can see it completed here now. And I've really enjoyed making it and I will enjoy using these Peerless watercolors and even just replacing individual colors as needed for years to come in this beautiful little booklet. Thanks for joining me. Please come visit me over on my blog anytime and I'd love to see you there.